Kira Tato, Ko Andrew Double Day Aho. Well, as I'm doing this video, it's the beginning of um, of Christmas week. I'm sitting here on the Monday and looking forward to the days that are ahead. Now, for the first time in many, many years, I'm not responsible for any Christmas services, and I must admit, it's a bit of a relief. I've got family coming, and we're looking to enjoy the time together. So, blessings to all of you, and particularly those who are have got one of the busiest weeks of the year ahead of you. May you just find this in the middle of it all, yet a time of blessing and a time of joy. The text that I've got for today, I'm, I'm not providing any help, I'm afraid, with uh, the Christmas services. The text is for next Sunday, which is uh, the 26th of December, which is Boxing Day. Uh, it was always my biggest nightmare was to have Christmas Day on the Saturday. So it's Christmas Eve services, Christmas Day service, and Boxing Day as well. And I seem to have dodged the bullet this year. So the text for today is for Sunday the 26th. And interestingly, it's not really very Christmassy. It's uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. And since it's going to be the last Sunday of 2021, and I don't know about for you, but for me and for many of my colleagues and friends, it's been a long year. And so hopefully as we look at the text today, I there were a number of ways that, uh, quite a number of ways that I could have approached it. But today I'm wanting to look at it in terms of where we are and how it might inform us as we move into 2022. As this year is finished and as 2022 opens. So here we are. Luke chapter 2 verse 41. Now every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why are you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favour. Now, as I said, there are a number of... Um, highways and byways, I could have gone down with this text. But I want to focus today on what's happening for Jesus. And it seems to me that as I've reflected on this, here he is at 12 years old, I imagine a year out before his bar mitzvah, a year before he becomes an adult. And yet there is a strong interior awareness within him of something of who he is. It is something that is growing within him. And as I've reflected on this, and it, it, it's, I've wondered. Here he is, this man, this boy who is growing to be a man with a special mission. A special call of God on his life. And even at this point, he has a deep awareness of God's call, of God's nudging, of God's presence. There's a sense of him opening himself to what it is that the one that he calls his father, and later will call Abba, Papa, is actually doing in him and through him. There is a long time of preparation. We hear nothing beyond this 
for another 18 years. It's until Jesus is 30. And he does not appear on the pages of history until then. It is then that he steps out and is ready to step in to all God has for him. What we see here is a vignette, a little snapshot of the journey that he's on, of where he is now at 12 years old. And the interesting thing about this for me is that we can kind of extrapolate a line to where he's likely to be when he gets to 30. And he gets there. He gets there. Stephen Covey talks about, um, about how we plan for the future and he one of his rules, his um, habits, is he says, you start with the end in mind. And we see Jesus with this awareness, even as a child, having a sense of where this is going. And so he's working towards a particular goal. It would be easy to imagine, wouldn't it, that there is a lot of this time that is wasted, because we just don't hear anything about it. I've come to realize, though, that the times often that we regard as the biggest waste are actually the most important. Before I trained, I went to Trinity College in 1987. In 1987, I had worked for 13 years for the government in a job that gave me little joy, in a job that I was temperamentally unsuited for, uh, in a job that I found inherently stressful. And I was there for 13 years. And I've, I've spoken about this often. And so often, for years afterwards, I look back and thought, I've just wasted 13 of the best years of my life. As I look back now at my advanced age and reflect on my life, I recognize how fundamentally important those 13 wasted years were and what they did in me and what preparation they worked in me and what character development they worked in me because of all the negatives that went with it and as I look back now I never want to repeat those 13 years but I can look back with a measure of gratitude and thankfulness to God for those 13 years because They've prepared me for the season that I found myself in subsequently and where I am today and talking with you today. Without those 13 years, I can't imagine what might have happened in my life. And so here's Jesus, also with a sense. We can look at him and think, well, what happened in the intervening years? We don't need to know. But we do know there was a sense of intentionality. We get that, the sense of an interior awareness of the presence of God with him. And that is what he focuses on. That is what he grows. That is what he seems to encourage within himself. Listening to the gentle voice, the still small voice, and following the promptings, the nudgings of the God that he comes to know as Abba Father. As we come to the end of 2020, are we able to look back at some of the difficult times that it has presented to us, some of the challenges that it has presented, and recognize the potentiality they have for gift? Because God wastes nothing, even our most horrendous experiences. If we hand them over to the Lord, God wastes nothing and can plow them back in to strengthen us, to prepare us, to equip us for what is ahead. May we look back on 2021 and the years that have passed with a measure of gratitude, not from what they've taken from us, but potentially as we mine down and drill down on it, what they've given to us. And may we look to the future, to 2022, with a measure of hope, it's not too late even now to change the trajectory. If we look at the line that Jesus was on, if we look at the line that we're on, we might think, actually, I don't like where this is going. If we take the, the advice of Stephen Covey to start with the end in mind, the, the track that I'm on needs some adjustment. Now is a good time to reset our compass. Now is a good time to reorient ourselves towards where God might be calling us to in a much more life-giving 
and positive way. So I want to encourage you as you come to the end of this year to think about this, the trajectory you've been on. Where is the end that it might lead to for you? And is that the end that you want? Is this a time where you can reorient? Because it's never too late. It's never too late with God to make a new beginning. And to say, okay, I commit myself to work, walking in this direction. Jesus is clear about where the path is leading him. We too can be clear about the path and know as Jesus did within a sense of interior awareness that he is not alone as he walks this journey but that as he walks the path that God has set for him there's always a sense of presence the same can be true for us when we wander to the left when we wander to the right a sense of God saying hmm not the best call and to allow God to keep us focused on the future for 2022. So, God bless you as this year comes to an end. May you be aware of the Lord's presence with you as you step off 2021 into 2022. I'd like to pray for you as the year finishes. Lord, I thank you for the year that has passed, for the challenges that we've faced, for some of the griefs that have been ours, for the huge learnings that have been involved in 2021. I pray that you would give us the grace to be able to mind these, to be able to absorb these learnings, to be able to allow them to inform us as we step off this year into 2022 with a clear-eyed vision, with a clearer sense of your call on our lives, even though we may take it only one day at a time, to be aware that we go into 2022 and we're not alone, that you are with us. Help us, because we can't do this on our own. So we give ourselves to you, our loving God, our Saviour and friend, the one who showed your commitment to us in this Christ child, the season in which we are currently celebrating. So thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. God bless you all as this year rolls to a close and the new one opens up. May you know his presence.